Welcome to the Process Model Training Series. This is video 9 of 11 basic videos. In this video, you will learn when to use resources and how to use resources. A resource can be a person, a piece of equipment, or a device to restrict the access to an area of a model. Using a resource allows representation of limits imposed by the system because of scarcity of that resource. Scarcity is due to the shifts a resource works on, breaks, random interruptions, and splitting time between activities. Use resources when needed. Skip the resources if everyone works on the same shift and if resources perform only one activity. When an entity crosses a resource assignment, a request for that resource is attempted. There are two methods of assigning a resource. First, by connectors, which is easier, and second, by using action logic, which offers more flexibility. Let's show the advantage of assigning resources with connectors. It's quick, it's visual, you can see resource assignments in an instant, and it collects stats automatically. Resource and queue stats are collected properly. When a line is drawn from a resource to an activity, a resource connector is created as a get and free. This is what happens when a get and free is used. When an entity arrives at an input queue of the activity, a request is sent for the resource. If the resource is not available, then the entity waits its turn in line. If the resource is available, then the resource is assigned to the entity and moved to the capacity of the activity. Any action logic is performed. Then the time is performed on the General tab. Then the resource is released from the entity. The entity then moves to the output queue or to the next activity. How do capacity of activities relate to quantity of resources? Capacity is the maximum number of entities that can process simultaneously at an activity. Quantity of resources are, in this case, the number of similar resources available for assignment. If I had nine receptionists and had a capacity of one at admitting, eight receptionists would remain unused. On the other hand, if I had one receptionist and a capacity of five at admitting, five check-in stations, then four of those stations would always go unused. The capacity of the activity and the quantity of resources are interrelated. Will there ever be a time when the quantity and capacity don't match? Of course. If a resource has several assignments, then the quantity of resources might be high in comparison to the capacity of the areas assigned. A resource can be connected to multiple activities or routes at the same time. Priority can be given to certain activities by changing the priority in the connector. The higher the number, the higher the priority. In this instance, incoming calls will always have priority over returning calls. Resources can be assigned to multiple activities to be performed in succession by connecting to the first activity with a get and releasing from the last activity with a free. The free occurs after processing is finished at the activity. Notice that the number of entities between the get and free connection is controlled by the quantity of resources. An alternate worker can be assigned by connecting to the connector of the primary resource. If the primary resource, the first resource connected, is not available, then the second will be tried. Interruptions during the workday significantly affect the throughput of a system. Resources can be assigned random downtimes by using the Availability tab. 
if a resource is 70% available, then 30% of the resource time will be taken out of service for random periods of downtime. During the simulation, a light over the resource shows its status. Blue is idle, green is working, and red is down. When the simulation is finished, the detailed output report has several graphs to represent resource behavior. The State and Utilization button shows graphing options. Select the Resource States graph. Click on the bar to open a pie graph. Notice the percentage in use may be slightly higher or lower due to the randomness of the downtimes. Weekly shifts for activities and resources are defined using the shift editor. Shifts may start and end at any minute of the day. Defining shifts for resources and activity is only necessary when there are different activities or resources with different work schedules. Otherwise, the simulation can run for a single block of time as if there was no off-shift time. Shifts and breaks are defined by blocking out sections of the day. What happens if the resource is busy working at the end of a shift? The resource will continue to work until the activity time is finished unless the interrupt current activity to go off shift or on break checkbox is selected. To assign resources with greater flexibility, use action logic. In this example, different resources and combinations of resources are needed for different types of entities. Assigning a resource with action logic provides this type of control. In this video, you have learned when to use resources and how to assign resources. In the next video, you'll learn options during the animation.